This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a horror, mystery, and sci-fi film called Open Grave. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the darkness, a man gasps in pain as his bones seem to be snapping back into place. In his pocket, he finds a lighter and a set of keys. He lights the lighter to inspect his wounds and his surroundings. He finds corpses scattered all around him and a woman looking from above. The man begs for her help, but she moves away. The man feels something on the ground and picks up a gun. Suddenly, the woman throws a rope for him to climb on. After escaping, the man stumbles around a forest until he spots a house. Inside, he overhears the people debating on whether or not to help him. With his gun drawn, he meets the occupants, Lucas, Sharon, Michael, and the mute woman who helped him out of the pit. Immediately, Lucas aims a shotgun at the man. The man accuses Lucas of killing the people in the pit, but Lucas shoots the accusation back at him. When asked who he is, he claims that he doesn't remember. Suddenly, the body behind Lucas screams in pain. Sharon helps the man, Nathan. As his bones snap back into place, the man asks him what's wrong with him, but the others can't answer. Once Nathan calms down, they discover that none of them have their memories. The house doesn't have a phone or computer to contact the authorities. The others only discovered their names using the IDs in their pockets. Everyone also found keys in their pockets, but there are no cars nearby. The man shares that he also had a key, but he didn't have an ID on him. With no name, they referred to him as John Doe. The mute woman writes in a foreign language, but they don't understand it. John asks the mute woman why she helped him, but Sharon and Michael stress that she doesn't understand English, though she seems to know them. The group woke up in the house before John, and the mute woman was already there. Lucas remains suspicious of John, as he's the only one who woke up in the pit and even found a gun there. The group checks the house for clues. The mute woman points out that she and Lucas have the same bruise on the crook of their arm, but she can't explain why. John and Nathan find the pantry where weeks worth of food is stored. After spotting something on the fridge, John fetches the mute woman for her to explain it, but Michael calls everyone before they can understand her. After the men leave, the mute woman stares at the calendar on the fridge, where April 18th, the day after tomorrow, is encircled. Downstairs is a cabinet full of guns and ammunition. When Michael effortlessly loads a gun, Nathan deduces that he's a cop. Later, while tending to his wound, John momentarily sees a glimpse of his past. The mute woman suddenly runs into the woods, so Lucas, Sharon, and John search for her. Lucas wonders if the mute woman is leading them into the city, but Sharon points out that the stars are too bright, meaning that there isn't a city for miles. While walking, John recalls a memory where he seemed to be dragging a body that had a seahorse tattoo. Soon, the trio finds two bodies tied to trees. While sifting through books, Nathan discovers that he can read Latin. Michael notes that his body remembers how to do things like loading a gun, but his mind is completely blank. He asks Nathan if he knows the house, but Nathan only recognizes the books. All of them are medical books about human and animal anatomy from different countries and different periods. In the woods, the trio finds a shed where the mute woman is feeding a woman in chains. The woman hides behind a pillar and accuses John of using her, furthering Lucas's suspicions against him. Suddenly, the woman lunges at John, yelling that she has a daughter. John knocks her out with the butt of his gun. During this, Lucas notices a surveillance camera, suggesting that someone is watching them. Sharon refuses to leave the woman in the cabin, but John argues that she was tied up for a reason. Instead, he urges them to find out where the camera feeds are recording. Later that evening, John uses his keys to try to open a heavy steel door in the house. Nathan finds him and coyly speaks in Italian, revealing that he's multilingual. While Nathan speaks Latin, John understands him, to both their surprises. Nathan comments that he feels like he knows John and Sharon. When John wonders if he can open it with a crowbar, Nathan points out that he can't because it's a reinforced door. Nathan then questions where he found the keys, and John claims that he found them in the living room. John suspects that Nathan knows what's behind the door. In the morning, the group discusses how to escape. Michael refuses to obey Lucas, claiming they need him more since he's the best shot. To prove his skill, Michael throws a cup and shoots it in mid-air. Still, Lucas demands him to stay and guard the house. Lucas, Sharon, Nathan, and John head to the forest to find a way out. Soon, they discover another body tied to a tree. Lucas is repulsed by the body's scent and hurries away. John points out that more bodies are scattered in the area around the house, and Sharon wonders if they're meant to be a warning. At the house, Michael stresses that it's his job to protect them all. Michael sees that the others are smart, unlike him, but he believes that he's meant to do something. He then approaches the mute woman, feeling that they have a connection. Suddenly, they hear a scream from the woods. Michael warns a woman to stay and lock the doors while he investigates. 
Outside, the group reaches a dirt road. As they head down the road, Nathan throws rocks around to pass the time and hits something metallic in the woods. The group inspects a stack of branches and discovers two cars inside. Meanwhile, Michael finds a man trapped in a barbed fence. The man begs for his help as the spikes pierce his body. Carefully, Michael attempts to free the man's legs, allowing the man to wrap his neck with the barbed wires before stabbing him. The deranged man's laughter slowly turns into sobs. He then begs Michael to help him again. On the road, one of the cars starts but has little fuel, while the second car's battery is dead but has more fuel. Sharon switches the radios on, but when it emits a high-pitched sound, Lucas turns it off since it's giving him a headache. John is hopeful that they can drive out of the woods, but Lucas refuses to take him. In the glove compartment, he finds an old photo of the entire group without John. John argues that he could have been the one taking the photo. Lucas then points out that they're in the middle of nowhere, so driving will just waste fuel. While heading back, the mute woman collects the rest and takes them to the man in the fence with Michael at his feet. Michael is still alive, but choking on his blood. Sharon desperately attempts to mend his wound, but he soon dies. Suddenly, the man in the fence screams, so John shoots him. This triggers John's memory of beating the tattooed woman and dragging her across the woods. Later, John pushes the other car while Sharon is on the wheel, successfully starting it. Minutes later, they find an abandoned building with the number 18 written on the gate. While looking in a mirror, Sharon spots a child running behind her. They search for the child and find him inside a locked shelter. John tries to convince a boy to come out, but the boy calls him Jonah and warns him that they will be coming tomorrow. At the house, Lucas starts seeing flashes of his memories, where he's running in the woods and caged in a cell. He then sees the mute woman's face, confirming that he knew her in the past. He grabs her hand tightly until Nathan pries his hand away. At the building, the boy threatens the adults with his anger dog. John shoots the lock on the door despite Sharon's protests. The boy continues to yell for them to run, and all the noise drives Sharon to the edge. John continues to break the door open, believing that the boy knows his true identity. Sharon finally calms him down, and it triggers a memory between them. To figure out what's going on with Lucas, Nathan asks the mute woman about the woman in the shed, so she takes him to her. When they get there, however, the woman has escaped. Upon finding a lake nearby, Nathan insists on following where it leads, but the mute woman blocks him. Still, he pushes on alone. As he walks in the woods, Nathan recognizes a path and follows it until he reaches a small abandoned village littered with dead bodies. When he finds a pair of glasses and puts them on, he remembers the group's voices arguing, hinting that they did something terrible. The mute woman returns to the house and sees that Lucas is up. He hints that he remembers something, so the woman runs away. Lucas weakly follows her, promising that he won't hurt her. He hears her inside the locked reinforced door, but she doesn't let him in. The mute woman climbs into the attic where she hides. Outside, Lucas discovers a door to the basement where he finds medical tools and human brains. There are also monitors overseeing several jail cells. In the village, Nathan discovers one of the cells. He hears a woman crying in another cell and finds a woman from the shed carrying her daughter's body. Nathan recognizes the woman as Helen. Helen sets her daughter's body down before attacking Nathan. Nathan quickly locks the cell and escapes. Helen's screams wake up the others who slowly approach Nathan. Meanwhile, Lucas finds a camera and plays a video about an experiment. On the video is John, who's captured a man in the woods and injected him with his formula. John mentions the side effects that include memory loss. The video reveals that Lucas and the mute woman are among John's test subjects. John and Sharon drive back to the house, but a tree suddenly falls and blocks their way. They discover a group of people chopping wood nearby. John calls out to the men, and they immediately chase them. The two reach their car, but it doesn't start. John pushes the car backwards just as the men reach him, but they don't attack after he pushes the car a few steps. Above the car, John notices a couple of bodies hanging on a tree realizing that the men won't go near the bodies. When they reach the house, Lucas immediately aims a shotgun at John. He reveals to Sharon that John experimented on them. John still doesn't remember, though he admits that he remembered bits of his troubled past. Sharon steps behind Lucas and watches the video, convinced that John is dangerous. John begs him that he just wants to know what he did, but Lucas knocks him out. Lucas drags John back to the pit. In the pit, John finds a woman with the seahorse tattoo. Seeing her triggers his memory of how he killed her and of him arguing with Nathan. He also remembers Sharon asking if he got blood in his mouth. At the house, Lucas hurries the others to escape. He gets the keys from Sharon, but she asks if Nathan knows where they're going. Lucas doesn't remember Nathan, worrying her. Sharon urges him to calm down, but he insists that they're safe with him. He then holds the mute woman too tight, and when Sharon tries to pull him away, he shoves her. 
The mute woman runs back to the attic, but he catches her. After knocking him down, she tries to run outside, but he tackles her. Lucas pins her and forcefully kisses her. Sharon aims a gun at Lucas, so he runs out of the house. Soon, the mute woman helps John out of the pit again, but he warns the woman to stay away from him afterwards. At the abandoned building, John finds the shelter empty. While searching, he finds a cooler and remembers giving one to someone, telling the person that it's their last chance. He searches for clues to find out what was inside and what will happen tomorrow. Then, he finds a map and remembers instructing the person to deliver the cooler somewhere, but struggles to recall where. Suddenly, he hears a woman's voice and follows it. He discovers two people, but he drops his keys when the woman moves to attack him. The woman swipes his keys away, then swallows them. She lunges forward, forcing John to shoot her. After retrieving the keys from the woman's body, John drives down the road. He stops upon finding the boy and his grandmother loading a car, where another woman screams wildly inside. The grandmother warns John to stay away and blames him for what happened to them. John begs him to tell them what they know, but they drive off. John finds the cooler from the other car that the boy looted and sees vials inside. He remembers experimenting on a human brain, then recalls instructing the delivery man to take the cooler to the army. John sees that the delivery man had crashed the car and gotten impaled. He takes a map where he marked where the army will be. In the glove compartment, he finds the car registration addressed to Jonah Cook and a photo of him and Sharon, implying that they're a couple. Jonah finally accepts who he is and finds the second car speeding towards him. He thinks it's Sharon, but the car crashes into his, revealing that Lucas is behind the wheel. Jonah approaches Lucas and remembers that he was trying to cure them. He retrieves the medicine from the cooler while explaining that he's a doctor and that Lucas is infected. Lucas can't focus on his words, however, and attacks Jonah. Lucas chokes him and kicks the syringe away. In defense, Jonah reaches for a rock and slams it on Lucas's head. Lucas starts to remember bits of his past before passing away. Jonah remembers the group being in the village where Lucas made a toast for Jonah saving his life. During this, the tattooed woman got out of her cell and attacked. Jonah killed her, then blamed Nathan for not locking her cell. Their argument reveals that Nathan is Jonah's brother. In the woods, Nathan cries as he remembers the same thing. He then runs, searching for Jonah. Instead, he finds Sharon in the house, aiming a gun at him. Their memories slowly return, so they lower their guns and embrace. Their moment is interrupted when the infected people attack the house. Jonah drives back to the house, remembering how he got to the pit. While hauling the tattooed woman's body, they received a radio transmission that the area was getting attacked. Jonah radioed Sharon to inject themselves with the cure to prevent the infection, despite the cure not being thoroughly tested yet. Suddenly, an infected man pushed Jonah into the pit and bit him. Jonah injected himself with the cure, knowing that he'd lose his memories. The car breaks down near the house, so Jonah hurries on foot. Nathan and Sharon shoot the infected from the windows, but soon run out of bullets. Sharon writes a letter for Jonah, in case they don't make it. Jonah runs through the woods, recounting how they tried to make a cure for the plague. At dawn, a helicopter arrives. Suddenly, the infected people are killed outside the house. Nathan remembers that the rescue team is supposed to arrive on the 18th, so he opens the door, calling for the team to collect them. The mute woman watches Nathan from the attic as he goes to the woods. He stops when a soldier aims a gun at him, and Nathan realizes that the army isn't there to rescue them. Jonah arrives just in time to see his brother get shot. Jonah and Sharon hide in the woods upon seeing Nathan killed. Jonah runs to Sharon, and they escape together. Meanwhile, the mute woman hides in a ditch. While running, Sharon gets stabbed by Helen. Jonah shoots Helen, then attempts to save Sharon. Seeing the soldiers nearby, Jonah carries her to the pit and drops inside. Jonah injects them both to enter a death-like state and convince the soldiers that they're dead. Sharon gives him the letter that she wrote and urges him to do it right next time. The couple kiss, and Jonah cradles Sharon as she dies. Jonah falls asleep right after. The soldiers eventually find the pit and throw all bodies over, including the boy. Hours later, Jonah wakes up with no memories again. He loses Sharon's letter, which would have revealed that they were doctors, close to curing the plague that spread through the world. The mute woman is immune to the virus, so Sharon urged him to protect her. The mute woman soon helps Jonah out of the pit, but they soon find a larger pit with more dead bodies. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.